Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voice of Anatomy. Today we will discuss about the hip bone. The another name of the hip bone is a innominate bone. It is an irregular type of the bone and it will form the pelvic girdle. This is the pelvic girdle. The right and the left hip bone together with the sacrum will form the pelvic girdle or a bony pelvis. Now it is homologous with the scapula of an upper limb. The each hip bone is made up of a three parts or a three bone. That is the ilium, pubis, and ischium. The ilium part will form the upper part of the bone. The pubis is a thin bone which lies antero inferiorly in the hip bone. And the ischium is a thicker than the pubis, it will form the posterior inferior part of the hip bone. Now these three bone, ilium, pubis and the ischium, they will fuse at a cup shaped hollow structure which is known as a acetabulum. Below the acetabulum you can see one large foramina, this foramina is known as an obturator foramina which will separate the thin pubis. Uh, anteriorly from the thick ischium posteriorly. Now overall the hip bone is having two component dorsal component and ventral component. You can see the dorsal component is formed by the ilium bone and the ventral component is formed by the pubis and the ischium. Uh, now we will see the articulation of the hip bone. Now, here, the hip bone, both the hip bone, anteriorly they will fuse and form the pubic symphysis joint, which is a secondary uh, cartilaginous joint. The posteriorly, the hip bone on the either side, it will articulate with the lateral end of the sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint, which is a pair joint. It is a plain variety of synovial joint. And the third, this acetabulum which is articular, it will articulate with the head of the femur to form the hip joint which is a ball and socket type of a synovial joint. Now we will, first we will discuss the side determination of the hip bone. The first, the ilium, flat expanded ilium will form the upper part of the bone, it lies superiorly. The second, the acetabulum. The articular part acetabulum is facing laterally. Third, obturator foramen lies below the acetabulum. It is separated by thin pubis anteriorly, thick ischium posteriorly. So, the bone in my hand is of a right side. Now, we will discuss the three parts of the hip bone. Today, only we will discuss in this video the ilium part. Now the ilium is a flat expanded part, lies in the upper part of the hip bone. It is having two ends, three borders and three surfaces. First we will discuss the two ends. The two ends are the superior end and inferior end. The superior end is in form of the thick ridge which is known as the iliac crest. And the inferior end, it will fuse with the pubis and the ischium at an acetabulum and it will form the upper two-fifth of an acetabulum. Now we will see in detail about the superior end, which is also known as the iliac crest. Now the iliac crest is extended from the anterior superior iliac spine anteriorly to the posterior superior iliac spine posteriorly. Now the iliac crest is divided into the ventral segment, larger one and the dorsal segment. The ventral segment forms the more than the anterior two-third of the iliac crest up to this line. This is the ventral segment and the dorsal segment will form the less than posterior one-third of the iliac crest. The ventral segment is divided into three parts, the outer lip, inner lip, and intermediate area. On its outer leaf, 4 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine, it will present one elevated area which is known as a tuberosity of a iliac crest. 
Now we see the attachment of these three parts. First the outer lip. The outer lip in its whole extent gives the attachment to the fascia lata for it. The second in front of this tuberosity, the outer lip, this area, will give origin to the tensor fascia lata. Second. Third, the tuberosity itself provides attachment to the iliotibial tract. The fourth, the outer lip in its anterior two-third part provides insertion of external oblique muscle of an abdomen. And the last fifth, the outer lip in its posterior one-third part gives the origin of a latissimus dorsi muscle. Now, the attachment of an inner lip. Inner lip in its anterior two-third part will give origin to the transversus abdominis muscle of the abdomen. And deep to this muscle provides attachment of fascia transversalis and fascia iliaca. Now, the inner lip in its posterior one-third provides origin of a quadratus lumborum muscle. Now, the third part intermediate area. Intermediate area in its anterior two-third part give origin to the internal oblique muscle of an abdomen. This is all about the ventral segment of an iliac wrist. Now focus on the dorsal segment. The dorsal segment will form the less than posterior one-third of an iliac wrist. It is having the lateral slope, median slope and intermediate reach. The lateral slope will give origin to the upper fiber of a gluteus maximus muscle and medial slope will give origin to the erector spine muscle. So, now the two end of the iliac wrist anteriorly anterior superior iliac spine, posteriorly posterior superior iliac spine. Anterior superior iliac spine you can felt in front of a flank clearly in the living. The posterior superior iliac spine, the important of it is that it lies at the level of a S2 vertebra and at this level the subarachnoid space will end. So this is all about the upper end of a uh, ilium that is the iliac crest. Now the second part, the border. It is having three border, anterior border, posterior border and medial border. First the anterior border. Anterior border extend from the anterior superior iliac spine above up to the acetabulum below. It will show in the upper end anterior superior iliac spine followed by one nose. Below the nose anterior inferior iliac spine and there is a rough triangular area below the anterior inferior iliac spine. Now the attachment anterior superior iliac spine will give origin to the sartorius muscle and the lateral end of the inguinal ligament. The second, the nodes below the anterior superior iliac spine will lodge is the lateral cutaneous nerve of a thigh. Now sometimes this nerve in this nodes will trap below the inguinal ligament and it will cause the pain along the lateral side of pain and tingling sensation on the lateral side of the thigh which is known as a meralgia parasthetica. The second, the anterior inferior iliac spine give attachment to the iliofemoral ligament and the straight head of a rectus femoris muscle. Now the second border that is the posterior border. The posterior border will extend from the posterior superior iliac spine above up to the posterior border of an ischium below. Now it will show in the upper part posterior superior iliac spine few centimeter below there is a posterior inferior iliac spine followed by the deep nose which is known as a greater sciatic nose. Now its attachment, the posterior wall border will provides attachment to the sacrotuberous ligament up to the upper part of the posterior inferior iliac spine. The upper margin of a greater sciatic nose will give origin to the few fiber of the pyriformis. Now this greater sciatic nodes, it will convert it into the foramina by the sacrotuberous ligament posteriorly and the sacrospinous ligament uh, below. Greater sciatic foramina. Third border is a medial border which lies on the inner side of a hip bone. 
it will extend from the iliac crest above up to iliopubic eminence below. Now this medial border is divided into three parts anterior one third, middle one third and posterior one third. The anterior one third will form the arcuate line. The middle one third will form the anterior curved line of a auricular surface and the posterior one third is rough. The third part in the ilium is a surface, it is having three surfaces, the gluteal surface that is outer one, the iliac surface, inner one and the sacropelvic surface, this is also lies on the inner side. First we will discuss the gluteal surface. The gluteal surface is convex in its anterior part and concave behind like a iliac crest. Now this gluteal surface is divided into four area by three lines. These lines are the first one is a posterior gluteal line. The posterior gluteal line will extend from the iliac crest 4 to 5 cm in front of a posterior superior iliac spine. It will run downwards and it will end just above the greater sciatic nodes, the posterior gluteal line. The second anterior gluteal line. Anterior gluteal line start 4 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine. It will pass it first backwards and then downwards to end at the middle of upper border of greater sciatic nodes. This one is an anterior gluteal line. The third one is an inferior gluteal line. It is ill defined. It will start above and behind the anterior inferior iliac spine. It will go backward and slightly downwards to end at the apex of a greater sciatic node, inferior gluteal line. So this three line will divide the gluteal surface into four areas. Now the attachment on the gluteal surface, the behind the posterior gluteal line, this area will give origin to the gluteus maximus muscle. The second area between the anterior gluteal line and posterior gluteal line will give origin to the gluteus medius muscle. The third area between the inferior gluteal line and anterior gluteal line will give origin to the gluteus minimus muscle. And the fourth area below the inferior gluteal line, this area will give origin to the reflected head of a rectus femoris muscle. Now, the second surface that is lies on the inner side that is called a iliac surface or iliac fossa which is a concave one. Now this iliac fossa or iliac surface is bounded anteriorly by the anterior border, posteriorly by the posterior border, uh, sorry medial border, superiorly by the ventral segment of the iliac crest and below by the iliopubic eminence. This iliac fossa from its upper two-third part give origin to the iliacus muscle. The last surface is a sacropelvic surface which also lies on the inner surface. It lies behind the medial border, behind the medial border and it is divided into three parts. The first part, the most upper part is a sac iliac tuberosity. Antero inferior to iliac tuberosity, there is an auricular area which is articular, and antero inferior to the auricular area, there is a pelvic surface. So, first we will see the iliac tuberosity. Iliac tuberosity is a large rough upper part of the sacropelvic surface. It is elevated in the middle and the depressed elsewhere. Now, this uh, iliac tuberosity in the most of the part will provide attachment of introsus sacroiliac ligament. In its posterior part, it will give attachment to the dorsal sacroiliac ligament and superiorly it will provide attachment to the iliolumbar ligament. Now the second part of a sacropelvic surface, that is an auricular surface, which is articular but pitted. It will articulate with 
a sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint which is a plain variety of synovial joint. Its anterior convex margin will provide attachment to the ventral sacroiliac ligament. Now the third part of the sacropelvic surface, the pelvic surface. It lies antero inferior to the auricular surface. Along with the upper margin of the greater sciatic nodes, it will form the pre-auricular sulcus which is deeper in the female than in the male. This pelvic surface in its upper part along the margin of greater sciatic nodes will give origin to the few fiber of piriformis and the remaining part, the smooth part, will give origin to the obturator internus muscle. So this is all about a illness. If you like this video, like it and share with your friends. And to get the regular update on the anatomy videos, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.